How's it going, everybody? And welcome to another episode of the Pursuing Greatness podcast. I'm your host, Gabe Peterson. This is the place where you can learn how to master your health, your wealth, and your love all in one place. So I hope you look forward to another great episode with another great guest. Um, before we get started, I do want to remind everybody that the best way to, to support the show is to simply subscribe, like, and share this episode with your friends. Also, if you want to get more involved with the show, check out our website at pursuinggreatnesspodcast.com. Um, other than that, I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you have your paper, pen and paper ready to take some notes on some great wisdom coming your way. And I look forward to seeing you guys on the other side of the episode. All right, we are live. Today we have with us Brandon Walker. Brandon is the founder of Beanie and Blazer, a company that trains aspiring high performers on mindset and lifestyle engineering. Brandon spent five years as SVP of sales at Untapped, the world's largest social media platform for beer drinkers, before leaving to start his new business. Brandon, thank you very much for coming on the show today. How are you doing? Gabe, thank you so much. I am doing wonderfully. How about yourself? I, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm awake and I'm excited to talk about beer drinkers. A platform for beer drinkers sounds really exciting. So that's, uh, that's getting me going right now. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun project and good for you at 7.30 a.m. already thinking about beer drinkers. Uh, that, <laughs> right. That's a level of commitment that most people aspire to. High performer here. Yeah, exactly. To get us started, uh, why don't you tell everybody listening you know, who you are, what you do, and how you got started down that path in the first place. Absolutely. So um, I recently founded a company called Beanie and Blazer. And as uh, Gabe said, the concept of the company is to train people across different domains and industries on how to become high performers. So we provide a lot of different educational content, community uh, and curriculum based um, training to help people identify their life's purpose, give them all the tools, tricks, tips uh, curated by entrepreneurs, artists, and athletes um, to help them take a science-based approach to high performance. Uh, how I arrived there, um, I spent five years as a vice president of sales for one of the fastest growing companies in the country. So Untapped is a beer app with over 8 million users. Uh, and I started with that company when I was 20 as a sales intern. Um, and very quickly, within a couple of years, I had 45 salespeople under me selling software to bars, restaurants, breweries, bottle shops, liquor stores. And in that experience, growing a really high velocity startup, I learned a lot about management and leadership and what it takes to separate from the pack and become a high performer in the context of business and sales. And um, that was my favorite part. So I had some life experiences coupled with my managerial ex, uh, experience that amalgamated for me to start this company to train people from all sorts of backgrounds on how to become badasses. I love it. I love it. Um, and so, I mean, the, the, so how long were you at Untapped? How, how long was that transition there? It was five years. It was five, five years. years. So I dropped out of college when I was 20 um, and joined with uh the company as the eighth employee um like i said as an intern and then uh next thing you know i'm testing cold calling scripts to <laughs> places in canada and got cussed out by a french chef because i uh i i was selling a product that didn't exist yet we were testing we were learning about like is there an appetite for this product and so I would get to the point where I would be getting a credit card. I'm like, wait, wait, stop, stop. This isn't real. I'm sorry. I'm an asshole. Like this is, and then they, oh, fuck you. And, um, but we learned that people want this. There's an appetite for what it is that we're going to sell. So I had the opportunity to start growing a team and building out the software stack. And next thing you know, we have this, this just engine running. Nice. I, no, I love it. There's, I mean, there's a few things that I want to ask, uh, a few ways that I want to take this conversation. Um, the first one, just, you know, you got in when you were 20, you were, this is a brand new company. Um, and then you, over five, the period of five years, you transitioned to having over 45 people on your team. So kind of take us through um, that transition for you and what the, what the growth was like um, during that period. I was very fortunate to have um, some amazing mentorship. So for me, having a, a passion for, for entrepreneurship, I 
it was, it was a strategic move to drop out of school, not to start my own company, but to be mentored by somebody who's been there, done that. So I could, you know, earn some scar tissue before I went to go do my own thing. And so the learning process was, uh, I sucked. I had never led anything other than as a captain on a basketball team. And now I'm responsible for generating, you know, we're going to do 3 million in sales this year. We're going to do 8 million this year. We're going to do 13 million this year. And it's like, uh, okay. Um, and so the learning curve was, I had a lot of grace from the leadership in the company. They just saw what I was capable of and poured a lot of energy and time and leadership into me to give me the opportunity to leverage my soft skills and turn them into like more finely tuned principles of leadership. Um, and beyond that, it's just with any other business or podcast or whatever it is, it's all about iteration, right? So you try one thing, it's not going to be right. You try a new thing, you try a new thing. So, uh, just me being flexible and willing to learn quickly and fail a lot, uh, I think put us in a good position for a growth trajectory. Yep. And I, I'm always a huge proponent of, um, of mentors over formal education. Um, I did finish college, but I do think that uh, it's not really necessary for the vast majority of people. I, um, I wish our society kind of went back to the apprenticeship model um, that they had back in medieval times. But um, so I love, I mean, I love that you, that was kind of your experience. You know, you did go to college, but then you left and you, and you really learned um, by doing, you learned by, you know, looking at the people who were doing it excellently and then mirroring them and then, you know, taking their advice and over time becoming better and better at what you did. I, uh, bless you. I, I totally agree about the, uh, the apprenticeship mentorship. There's a quote from Goodwill Hunting. It's something like, you spent $150,000 on an education. You could have got it from the library for a dollar 50 in late fees. And it's like, now that we have the internet and we have all these online courses and curriculums and thought leaders, yeah, there's really no excuse to not just go fetch whatever it is that you want to develop skills in. Yep. Yeah. And things like uh beating and blazer where you guys, you could teach performance-based um, education. I don't want to go into that, into that yet. Um, I want to stay in your story right now, but uh, I do like that you guys, you know, that is a, a platform um, to get education without having to pay out $150,000. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Um, so the next things, I mean, you've mentioned before that you guys did iterating a lot. Um, you didn't start with the product that you're going to sell. In fact, you even called people, um, you were, you were asking, you know, what do you guys want in this product? Um, and then you didn't even have the product to sell them. You were just, you were figuring out what the market wanted. Um, a lot of people listening, watching, they, they're thinking about starting a business. Maybe they started a business, but they're not quite sure if they got the right market fit. Um, what kind of words of wisdom do you have for those people? Um, when it comes to finding the right, the right product, um, to launch your business with. Um, I am a big, so there, there are multiple sort of, uh, thoughts or schools of thought on how you identify a product. One is the passion, right? Like if you're a hairdresser, if you're a real estate agent, you have identified a niche that you're really passionate about, you know a lot about it inherently, and you build something for people who fit your profile. And um, for me, that is not the approach that I took. Another school of thought is you identify a potential market, you go interview a ton of people in that market to back into a solution. So you think of uh, Kind of like bottom up, top down kind of approaches. Yeah, perfect. That's a good way to say it. And then I think the third, so you may know nothing about the market, right? Mm. Then I think the third approach is you have a thesis that may or may not be rooted in something that you're passionate about or have a ton of experience in, but you've identified a potential problem and you go with a potential solution and you start uh, sourcing feedback based on your hypothesis instead of just rote asking the questions to back into a product idea. So in our case, I identified, I sort of drew a quadrant chart for people and rated them on from a scale of zero to three from a high performance perspective. Your threes are the people at the top of their field, professional athletes, Elon Musk, like, you, you know, threes we all idolize and want to emulate. They're at the top of their game. 
Twos are people who are maybe have a little bit more youth or they have a lot of the same innate skills, but haven't quite kicked it that much into gear. So think of, you know, corporate executives uh, at smaller stage businesses or people who are rapidly climbing the ranks of their company or folks who are getting their PhDs and are starting to optimize their academia. You have your ones who are typically it's bred from youth. It's people who have a lot of potential, but don't know what the hell to do with it. Like they're sitting there, they're like, I feel restless. I have explode. these ideas. What's yep. that? Ready to explode. Just kind of bounce yeah, just pent, pent up energy. And so, and then you have your zeros who are the folks who are just totally content being complacent, happy with the same old day in, day out, don't have that orientation for growth, which is okay. You know, it's just from a, on a performance scale. Yeah. So for us, we identified, I think that there is a gap missing for the ones to help them get to twos. Mm. And so we create a lot of methodology and training like, hey, you have all this potential. You don't quite align with the American dream or the status quo of what is expected of you, but you need somebody to provide some frameworks to help you get in line with your purpose. And so we started with a thesis. Now we're testing that with ads and conversations like this to see if there's actually a market for people to be drawn into that type of an offering. I love it. No, that makes uh, that makes a lot of sense. And I mean, I personally um, think that's a great, great thing. I spent uh, seven years in corporate and management consulting, hated every day of it. Um, and I wish there had been something like uh, like that to where I could, you know, take the potential that I had. I, I knew I wanted to start a business, but I just didn't have the framework. Um, and so you know, having that framework, having some type, some type of bumper to kind of give you um, a direction uh, when you when you have this energy, you have this desire um, that that uh, I can see the real need for that. So I hope you guys uh, push it through to the end there. Thanks, Gabe. Thanks. Absolutely. So um, okay, so going forward, let's uh, let's switch gears to um, Beanie and Blazer. I want to hear about this. So you guys, uh, you already you already went into kind of how you got the idea and what the the basic fundamentals are. You say you um, you're basically trying to get ones to twos in the framework that you were just saying. The, there's four four levels of performance. Um, the ones are the ones who are uh, they they've got a lot of energy and but they just don't know they don't really have a structure to get them to twos, which is somebody who is you know moving in the direction of growth. Um, so first, how did you come up with the idea? And then second, um, what is your guys' plan to kind of grow? I want to hear, you know, from somebody who's gone through the growth, what, what, your, what your direction is. Great question. Um, so last, last March, I got invited by a mentor of mine, a business coach mentor to go on a dirt biking trip in Mexico. And Absolutely the plan fun. was to ride the Baja 1000 tracks, like pre-run them, um, which is a huge like adventure dirt bike race down in Mexico. And is a thousand, does I that mean a thousand miles? Guys. It's a uh, thousand kilometers. Okay. Okay. Still, yeah. that's a long ways. It's a long ways. Yeah. It's typically a rally, um, yeah. like where people, uh, or a relay rather, where people okay. you know, take turns. Um, and so I said, yes, I was going with a group of, I was the youngest person in the group by like 15 years. All these guys have a ton of experience riding. I have never been on a motorcycle before. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> so I went and bought a motorcycle here in North Carolina where I live to learn how to ride, like literally use the clutch and, you know, flip the, flip the gears and stuff. So I like, okay, I can sit my ass on a motorcycle. I can stay up on two wheels. We can do this. But the first time my ass ever hit a dirt bike like a we're talking a 450 cc horse of a motorcycle yeah, it was literally crossing the border into Takati uh going to Mexico I was wearing rubber boots instead of proper dirt biking boots I had I had no idea what I was actually getting into um and I was told ahead of time like dude this is high risk this is high velocity like this is a real life experience that you're going on I'm like yeah no it's fine it's cool <laughs> I got my ass kicked. Like, uh, <laughs> I crashed so many times. I, um, you know, I got into a really deep flow state where like everything, my house, my family, my girlfriend, my dog, my work, everything back home was just gone. Doesn't matter. Brand- I'm riding my bike. <laughs> yeah. Brandon versus dirt bike versus mountain. <laughs> and, um, and so I had this just 
it was the hardest experience of my life, bar none. It was four days, 500 miles of dirt biking. Um, again, never having done this before. My boot blew out on the second day because I was wearing the wrong boots. Mm-hmm. So we had to like get Mexican duct tape and duct tape a Mexican <laughs> tin can to the Mexican bottom. Mexican duct tape, I love it. It's, it was fucked up. And, uh, and so um, anyway, bruises everywhere. I crashed a lot, but like I was fine. Just, you know, merely a flesh wound. And, um, on the flight home, I sort I started synthesizing like that experience in the context of what I do for work. So the idea of adventure leads to new insight, new insight leads to better leadership, better familial relations. And so I just started piecing together this idea for a, a real world conference that would put together like conference type education with adventure. So I initially started having this idea for a meetup or a retreat of some sort, then COVID and, you know, I've never run a live event. So the logistics of that started getting rather complicated. Um, And then with untapped, we ended up the company sold. um, So they're going to hyper growth mode and rather than me staying on for the next five, seven years in that capacity, it just felt like the right time for me to, transition and pursue this wholeheartedly um so yeah it's a combination of just loving training people with going on this adventure getting my ass kicked and figuring out like hey if i can get other people to buy into pushing their comfort zone there's something there that you can unpack and learn something about yourself and start applying um and then as far as the implementation of the actual business like what is going to happen my mission for the company is to build the world's largest community of high performers across domains that are trained on our methodology that are living in alignment with their personal values and goals so what that means is they're living authentically in pursuit of their life's purpose and it's derivative of the education and the community that we provide for them that's long-term big scale millions of people big impact type of uh of of, um, message that we want to drive as far as where we are today tactically we're launching a beta of our first product called the mindset accelerator which is going live in november we're accepting 10 students to our inaugural beta what the mindset accelerator is is it's a six-week program facilitated by me and an executive coach uh, that takes you through our entire curriculum that again is derivative of positive psychology and neuroscience and a lot of the methodologies that we've trained my employees in a tech startup environment. So the idea is we launch this beta, go through a six week program, give people workshops and small groups and build a tribe around them and help them integrate the lessons back into their daily life. Uh, with the hopes that going to 2021, we can scale that much more broadly, better understand our audience and the way that we deploy the actual course load. So between now and then, it's just, I'm publishing essays, I'm publishing, we're, we're about to release a podcast, it's a lot of content, audience, and product development before that beta goes live. Awesome. I love it. So you, got, you started with a concept that you got from, this, um, from your trip down to Mexico. Um, you wanted to kind of create a create a, a community and a, and a platform where people can learn how to um, how to pursue greatness, how to become better in their lives. <laughs> Sorry, I yes. had to do that plug there. Mash uh, made in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> um, and now you guys are kind of in the the. I mean, going back to your original story, you're in that iteration mode where you're you're creating content, you're kind of finding that product to market fit. Um, and you know, jumping on podcasts like this, and sounds like you're going to be launching your own podcast soon. So that's uh, that's awesome to hear. Thanks. Yeah, we um, at least for the first 10, 20 episodes, we're not having guests. It's just me and a buddy going back and forth on performance. It's called Beanie and Blazer Radio. Uh, but we're launching that September 9th. Very cool. Very cool. Well, I uh, I hope this goes well. I love the topic and I love the I love the vision, and it'll be interesting to see the um, the execution once you guys get you know boots on the ground, uh, you know, start doing things in real life. Thanks so much. Yeah, I uh, with you launching your podcast and scaling that, I'd love to help each other out. I mean, the brands are pretty congruent as far as I can tell. Like I sent you my message, so I'd love to stay in touch and help each other. Yep.
Absolutely. Absolutely. With that said, we are at the end of the episode. It goes by super quick. So we're into the quick question round. Um, it's going to be five really quick questions. You answer them how you like. The first one is about books. I love education. I like getting education outside of the classroom, as we talked about earlier. So um, books are a big thing for me. If you could give a book recommendation for one one book recommendation for what you're talking about right now, which is business, and then one book recommendation for just general life wisdom, what would those book books be? I would say for uh, related to Beanie and Blazer type subject matter, um, I think Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark Manson is <laughs> an amazing, just it's the first step is figuring out who you are and what you want, regardless of what other people think. That's that one. Um, general best practices, great book, how to win friends and influence people. I Good think one. influence selling, building relationships is critical. Uh, I always recommend that for folks who are looking to broaden their uh, network. Yeah, I love that. Great recommendation. So a friend of mine read uh, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, and he said it was really good. Um, I haven't read it myself, but I, I've read How to Win Friends and Influence People. I don't know how many times. It is a it is a solid book for sure. Written in 1924. Still pertinent. Oh, I, I did not know that. 1924. That is old. I think. Yeah, but still, I mean, everything he says in there is still like, it's right on, on point. Amazing. All right. Next question. Um, the Habits. Habits are what underlie our life. It's the foundation for our life. So if you could pin your success down to one habit, obviously it's more to it, but the, the habit that contributes the most to your success, what would that habit be? Oh, that's a good one. I, I think it's, it's regular exercise. That's my cornerstone habit that everything else anchors to. I know it's basic. It doesn't have to be a ton, but doing something physical, it underlies a lot of other stuff for me. No, that's funny because my uh, that's the same one for me. It's it has nothing to do with productivity, but like if if I if my life doesn't feel right, I know I just point all my attention to exercise, and then for some reason everything else starts to pile back on. But exercise, exactly. just, it it gets it. All right, next question. Um, if you could go back to the Brandon who is you know just dropping out of college, uh, just starting at Untapped, you know walking through the door as the intern, and give that Brandon one piece of advice going forward what would that piece of advice be? Jeez, man. <laughs> keep, keep going. Like, uh, yeah, don't, don't lose faith. Keep going. Stick to it. Never give up. I like that. The um, quote by, I think it was Winston Churchill. He said, never, ever, ever, like 3000 ever give up. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's a good one. I have, uh, I have this tattoo that says sink and swim and the, the sink is crossed out. So just a reminder, like keep going. Um, yeah, I think that's a good one. I like it. I like it. Um, last question. And this one is for the listeners. Um, you know, you've given us tons of good advice and I know that there are people out here who are itching to, to reach out to you. So if, uh, if they did want to reach out to you, what would be the best way for them to do that? I would say uh, I'm super active on Twitter. So my Twitter is bwalk underscore 12, the number 12. So you can find me there. I post regularly. My DMs are always open. Um, that's the best spot to find me. All right. Bwalk underscore 12 on Twitter. And I will also um, put his LinkedIn URL in the show notes. So if you want to click through there, you can, uh, you can reach out to Brandon that way. Um, so again, Brandon, thank you very much for coming on. I appreciated you. I appreciated everything you said, um, for everybody who's here on this journey with us today. Thank you guys for showing up. Couldn't do this without you. And I hope you guys have a great week. Um, again, the best way to support the show is just to subscribe, like, and share with your friends and family. And, uh, we look forward to seeing you guys on the next episode. Thanks, Gabe. Thank you guys for sticking with us on another episode of the Pursuing Greatness podcast. I hope you got a lot of value out of that guest. Um, again, the best way to support the show is just to subscribe, like, and share with your friends and family. Also, check out pursuinggreatnesspodcast.com if you want to get more information about what we do and what we offer. Um, I hope you guys have a great day and, uh, and keep living in integrity with yourselves. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode coming shortly.